Let us bless each other, be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. With the double portion of the Spirit, let us raise the 10,000 disciples. One day I went to uh, this one elder's house. And I asked her, I asked her, as you live, uh, as you lived on, what is the most thing that you are uh, proud about? And she said, believing in Jesus. And I think I told you this before in one of the messages. There is a remnant leader school. And one of the students that attend RLS, the, their parents, the mother, became, uh, had cancer. And the husband asked, you, you don't have much time to live. And what is one thing that you do not uh, regret? And she said, and she said, sending my two children to RLS. And as I heard this, uh, I had a lot of thoughts in my mind. So I thought to myself, what is the most blessed thing inside my life? Yes, you have lived a hard life. Uh, really think, uh, what is it that I do not regret and what I'm really proud about as I live my life? I'm very lacking, there's nothing to boast about. But if there is something that I can still boast about right now, is I still stand in front of the gospel. In the book of Deuteronomy, to the Israelites, two months prior, entering into the land of Canaan, through Moses, this was the sermon that was given. They came out of Egypt and they walked through the wilderness. And today, God is telling them, before entering into the land of Canaan, the blessed path. We must really think, which path am I standing on today? And first, there is two paths in, inside of our lives. In today's passage, on verse 15, as I see, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. And we have death and evil and life and good, these two paths. 
Even if you see Matthew 7, 13, there is a narrow gate and there is a wide gate. I said the gate is wide and the way is easy and many people go to that place. But the narrow gate there is, is small so that not many people go to that place. It might seem as if we live just our lives just as we want. But we are always in this uh, path where we are always deciding between these two. Even if there is three or four paths, we must still choose uh, one path. But there is only two. We do not have that many decisions. If we, if we select differently, death and anger will be upon us. But if you choose good, life and blessing is there. There is always a process inside of our lives. We all have this journey that we live. And there is a nature inside of us that is, in, that is not easily changed. But through the gospel, God is changing our nature. Because this nature doesn't uh, isn't changed quickly, so we think to ourselves, what is wrong with me? But moment by moment, then we realize that, oh yes, the word of God is correct. That is when little by little our natures are changed our lives will change 180 degrees uh, this Paul, he also was changed through the gospel, through Christ, but he too had this nature. And if you see in Romans 7, 24, it says, Wretched man I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Um, how is he able to confess this? He saw himself that he is still being uh, dragged by sin. This Paul, who, who was changed through Christ 180 degrees, that moment, uh, he still had this nature that he could not solve. And we all have spiritual problems that we cannot solve. It could have come, come from the family line, or it could have come through the scars of the past. And this becomes the path to, for Satan to work. But this spiritual problem is very, it was from the very long time ago, so it's, it is not easy to change this. And anybody has these kind of problems inside of their lives. That is why if you are not filled with the, by the Holy Spirit, then we bring out the things from the past. For evangelist, Paul the evangelist, he too had problems. He had spiritual problems that he could not tell anybody else. But he prayed about this three times, sincerely. But was he healed? 
If he's in Second Corinthians, he was not healed, but he had the solution. But because of that problem, he was able to look to Christ more. And because of the problems that he had, he was facing, he was able to look at Christ. And you can see that the spiritual problem that Paul had was not a hindrance for him to deliver the gospel. Yes, it will take some time, so God is letting us enjoy the gospel. And gradually, He will complete us. <clears throat> the people, the Israelites who came out of Egypt, they did not go straight into the land of Canaan. And you can see that inside of the wilderness, God was changing their nature and their spiritual problems, and He was healing them. All the things that happened inside of the wilderness it was the time for where God was healing the Israelites. There is a, this kind of process, but if we lose hold of this process, then we are dismayed, we are discouraged by ourselves. But we are, are discouraged because works are not taking place right away. Gospel isn't something that takes place or not. It will absolutely take place. If you see in Philippians 1.6, as I am sure of this, that who begin a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That is why you must really believe. Because we are lacking and we may have problems inside of our family, but God will fulfill His gospel. As I listen to the message, more and more I come to this conclusion. I can see that, oh, that person really believes in God. And I am able to discard my unbelief. The more I listen to the message, I see that, oh, that person really believes in Christ or believes, believes in God. And through uh, all the works and the good things and the bad things, they see it as the time schedule of God. And he sees it as uh, and I am I can see that my faith is restored through that. There's really nothing for us to do. If we just discard our unbeliefs, then the word of God, myself and the field will match. And you can see the work of God. God has called us for the world evangelization. God has called us to save the 237 nations. And God will raise up raise us up inside of the gospel. Do not be discouraged because things are not taking place right now. Because there are processes. And God will absolutely raise us up and use us. The problem is we must always remember that there is two paths inside of our lives. There are two types of people. The Israelites, there are people who fell into disobedience, and there are people who obey the God's word. As a representative, the Israelites stood in front of the Red Sea. 
The Israelites all at once resented against Moses. And the army of Egypt is chasing after the Israelites. But in front of them, there was the Red Sea. At that time, what did the Israelites say? Why did you bring us out of Egypt and let us die in this place? But Moses selected the path of belief. If you see, if you see in the book of Exodus, you can see that do not be afraid. God will stand in front of us and let you people cross. So what path are we always choosing? If you see in Book of Numbers, uh, they send 10 spies. The 10 spies and two other spies, Joshua and Caleb, they were different. It says, that place is filled, uh, is flowing with milk and honey. But the other ten said that we cannot take over that land. We seem like grasshoppers to those people. And the Israelites who heard this, they all resented day and night. And later on, they say again, why did you bring us out of Egypt and let, making us die in this place? Well, you, you should have just killed us inside of the wilderness, but why are you killing us here? And that is why they started to make this uh, other methods and they say raise up a, a different leader and let's go back to Egypt. But Joshua and Caleb said, they're food to us. The Lord God is with us. But people, the Israelites who gave, uh, who disobeyed the word of God, they were all, they all died inside of the wilderness. We are always standing in front of a path. To, if, are we selecting the path of belief or unbelief? Uh, people who use humanistic ways and doing the things, or using their own brain to do things, it might seem like they, they might seem like they're uh, quick on their foot, but later on will bring failure. I believe in the name of Christ, so whenever you face a problem, really choose the path of belief. And secondly, we must always choose the gospel. In verse 19 today, it says, that I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, and that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. And at the end, it says, it says, therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live. So there is death and anger, and there is life and blessing. So choose the path of life. It's telling us to always choose the gospel.
God will, inside of His time schedule, will absolutely change us and will use us. Just because there is God's time schedule, He's not ignoring our time. God, inside of His time schedule and inside of our time, God will change us. And He started good inside of our lives. That's why we really have assurance that God will raise us up and change us and use us. Uh, are your children not listening to you? Not listening to you? God is and the process of changing them. Yes, you can think to yourself, what? Why are they like that? But God is through the gospel is changing them. This thing called nature doesn't just change that quickly. That is why God gave us the gospel. Gospel is the solution to all problems. Jesus Christ is the solution to all of the problems. There is nothing that He cannot do. That is why we must come to the conclusion that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus came as the Christ. He has come as the true king, true priest, true prophet to solve the Genesis 3 problems where we cannot solve. Through Satan, all problems have come. Because of the original sin, all problems started. And through that, we are caught by Satan. And we are separated from God, and we are caught by Satan, and we are faced with problems. Our lives are seized by Satan, and we are inside of the original sin. And no one can break us break free from this. That is why, from the beginning, God promised. Because you cannot uh, break free from this with the with our own strength. That is why He promised us to send Christ. It says, uh, the virgin will give birth to a son. Mankind cannot solve the problem of Satan. If you see in Genesis 3, 4 through 5, Satan deceives mankind to be separate from God. And they made uh, Satan made the mankind fall into Nephilim. And if you see in Genesis 11, they go up against God. That's what Satan does. And that is still continuing today. And the three organizations is utilizing this. And all of the people who are giving idol worship are falling into this. What does it mean by they're all falling into this? They do not believe in the existence of Satan. That is why the only name that can break down Satan is Christ. And that is why it came from the Virgin. And this Christ that has come from the Virgin can break us free from Satan. In front of the blessing of the offspring of women, that's when all of the darkness crumbles. That is when we must come to the conclusion that Jesus is the Christ. And this is true even today. That is why it is the 
No, Peter confesses, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he is still living and he is still working inside of us. Follow after me. Nothing can become a problem. If Jesus Christ that finished all of the problems is still living and is still working inside of us, then there is nothing, no problem inside of our lives. Really, restore 100% of your faith. If Jesus is the Christ, then there is nothing that we need. Just entrust everything to Christ and pray. If He is still walking with us today, then just entrust everything. But why can we entrust everything? Because of our thoughts, because of my standards. He is walking with us today, but why cannot we uh, enjoy that? Because of our thoughts and because of our standards. Really know that God is with you and really 100% believe in Christ. And that is when the, the genius that is given from above will be given to you. The blessing that Joseph and Daniel uh, enjoy. We must really 100% believe this. If Jesus is the Christ, there is nothing that He cannot do, then there is nothing that we cannot do. Yes, we can meet people, real people. And we can meet people that we do not like. We, we, we can meet people who make mistakes. But really, accept everyone because God can change them. But even for me, I am a human being, so I like people who like me and I do not like people who do not like me. But Christ can change anybody. That is why we must accept everyone and forgive them. Say, even if they do wrong seven times, you forgive them seven times. And that is seven times seven is forty-nine. It's, it means just forgive them endlessly. We too were people who can not receive forgiveness. But through Christ, we have received salvation and we have become a changed man. That is why we can forgive others and we can accept the mistakes that other people make. If you see in 1 Peter 3 8, don't, don't uh, repay other people with evil. And it says, rather, really, uh, forgive them. That is why really uh, choose the path where you can forgive other people. Even if people take everything away from you, just give them away. <laughs> Although we do not have much, but if they take that away, just give it to them. 
Even if people around you are all con artists, then just uh, but I'm not a con artist, so that is okay. Knowing what is important is winning. If you say that Christ is absolutely with you, then nothing can become a problem to you. If somebody takes away something that is your that belongs to you, yes, you feel bad. But we must overstep that. God has called us inside of Christ to, where we have everything in Second Corinthians. It may seem like we have nothing, but we possess everything. This is our status who possess Christ. We are people who possess everything. Then just wait. Because God is uh, gradually changing us, we must just wait. Yes, so if we look at people next to us, we can't be frustrated. Yes, how can we save 237 nations? But that is our thoughts. Yes, same, for, same for our remnants. When I look at the remnants, it is the greatest blessing for them to really know the gospel and be raised up. If you see in Philippines 1 6, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I really believe this. Really, we must be guided by the Holy Spirit. How can we be guided by the Holy Spirit? Just follow after the word. If you look at verse 20, it says, Loving the Lord your God, obeying His voice, and holding fast to it. For He is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land of the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. It says, obey his voice and hold fast to him. It's the same meaning. His following after the word is choosing the path of life and blessings. If you are not guided by the Holy Spirit, then we will face great problems. If you follow after the Holy Spirit, or if you are guided by the Holy Spirit, then He will raise us up. And He will bring us to completion and He will use us to save the 237 nations. It may seem like something that I'm doing right now may be small and feels like it's nothing, but later on, God will use us to do world evangelization. If you see in verse 14 today, so, but the word is very near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart, it, it, and in your heart, so, so that you can do it. 
It said the word is very near you, and it is in your mouth and it, in your heart, so that you can do it. If you pray and be guided by the Holy Spirit, then we can be, we can follow after the word. Nothing can fulfill the words. If you are not guided by the Holy Spirit, then we cannot have word fulfilling fulfillment take place inside of our lives, and we cannot follow after the word. Really, be filled by the Holy Spirit and be guided by the Holy Spirit inside of your lives. I'll come to a conclusion. When you choose the gospel is inside of the two paths, then you will receive life and blessings. The very first thing that comes is the blessing of meeting. If you really enjoy the power of life and the power that is in the blessing of life, then the blessing of meeting will come to you. And you will raise up remnants and disciples. Is there any greater blessings than that? The greatest blessing is to raise up the disciples and the remnants. And just as uh, uh, God promised the Israelites that they will enter into the land that was promised to their ancestors, will be given to the Israelites. Being filled by the Holy Spirit and being guided by the Holy Spirit is very important. It may seem like nothing. But later on, this is connected with the world evangelizations. You must remember. Moment by moment, today is important. Being guided by the Holy Spirit, that today is important. And choosing the path of blessing, life and blessing, that today is important. And later on, you will stand as the witness and the leaders to sa save the 237 nations and do world evangelization. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for raising us up inside of the gospel. Thank you for letting us stay inside of this blessing where we can be guided by you. May we become the Hana Church be, that choose life. And may your works be shown inside of our lives and really save all the people that we meet. And let our all Hana Church believers really take possession of that 237 nations and save them. In Jesus Christ, we pray.